Welcome to Miss Merrill Makes. I'm Miss Merrill. You may have noticed that I changed the channel name for my YouTube account to Miss Merrill Makes, and that's because I just want to be able to make so much more with you. And with Miss Merrill Makes, the possibilities are endless. Today I have a new project that I'm going to show you, and I'm really excited to do this with you today. I'm going to be showing you how to make some hot air balloons with fun patterns and designs. This lesson I typically do with younger elementary students, grades kindergarten through second, but if you're older than that and you want to participate, of course you can, and an easy way to do that is just by making your picture a little bit more detailed and complex. So for this lesson, I typically have my students draw it with pencil, and then we go over the designs with black crayon. So it looks kind of like this. After they, after they do the pencil and black crayon with either the option of doing two balloons like you see in this example or one big one. And then my students uh, fill it in with the Crayola watercolor paint sets. Um, you can use whatever you have at home to fill this in. Maybe you just wanna leave it in black and white with patterns, that always looks really nice. Maybe you just have crayons or markers or colored pencils at home. Those will work great. I am going to show you how to make this sunset colored sky with watercolor paints, just in case you have paint sets at home or just if you're curious. A lot of students ask how to get the colors to kind of fade and blend together in the sky. So I'm going to be showing you all the steps up close today. So I will be changing the viewpoint of the camera. So I'm going to be following the steps on my chart, but up close and I'm ready to get started. So let's do it. Okay, here we are. I have my paper, my watercolor paints and water cup to show you later how to do the sky. And I have my permanent marker that I'm gonna be using to draw with. Again, if you have pencil at home, I do recommend drawing with that first. If you wanna write your name on the anywhere on your paper, the front or the back to start, you can go ahead and do that now and also write the date. I'm gonna start with the second step, which is to draw a horizontal line going across the bottom of the paper here. And sometimes what I like to do, so as you can see, my paper is going vertically or standing up the long way. That means the shorter side of the paper is facing my body on the table and the longer side is standing up top. But to draw this line, sometimes it makes it easier for me if I turn my paper going this way and then I draw the horizontal line going towards my body. And then when I turn it, it becomes horizontal, okay? This line makes the top of the grass. And then the next step that we're going to add is some hills above this line. So you can do however many you want. Maybe you fit just two, maybe you fit four. Looks like I'm gonna fit about three. And you can make them just plain and rounded like this. You can make them a little bit bumpy, or if you wanna make them pointier like uh, mountains, you can do that as well. Okay, next I'm gonna add my balloon. You can do one or two balloons in your picture. I'm gonna show you how to do one big one. So first what I need to do is draw a horizontal line about three or four inches long going across my paper. Since I'm doing one big one, I did mine in the middle of my paper, but if you're doing um, two balloons, you might want to make this line a little bit on each side, okay? Okay, next what I want to do, oh, and also make sure to leave enough room under that line for the strings of the balloon and for the basket that we're going to add later. Okay, next I'm going to add kind of a big loop shape around that straight line. So I'm from one end of it to the other to form the balloon. So it's almost like a circle with a straight line across the bottom of it. Next, I'm going to add four vertical lines coming out of this balloon, about one and a half to two inches long. So I like to do two on the sides first, and then two spaced out in the middle. And two for a total of four. Next, I'm gonna make my basket. So for the basket, I'm gonna draw almost like a trapezoid. That means I draw a line across, 
under all the strings. Then I'm gonna make the sides go in just a little, slightly diagonal. That's what makes it a trapezoid instead of a rectangle. And then a line across to connect it at the bottom. There. Now all I have to do is add some crisscross to my basket. So there's lots of different ways you can do crisscross. Um, you can do crisscross diagonally, like you see in this example. Um, this is a crisscross style that's more of like fish scales, or you can do straight up and down crisscross. I'm gonna show you the diagonal one because I really like that one. So I'm gonna make diagonal lines inside of the basket. Think of diagonal lines in the shape of an X. So the X has one line going this way and then it has another going this way. So my next set of diagonal lines is going to go the opposite way. Okay, now I'm gonna add some lines into my balloon to make spaces for the different patterns. So first what I wanna do is, and this is optional, but I just like to add a curved line going across the top because that would make it, if the balloon was laid out flat, like a big circle in the middle, like a parachute kind of. And next what I'm gonna do is add a curved line on each side inside the balloon that follows the direction that the side is bending. So since this side is going this way, I added another line going that way in there. And then I'm gonna do one on the other side. And I'm gonna fit two more of those. One more like this, and one more like this. Okay, now I have some different areas or spaces to make some patterns in. And I showed you how to do them up and down like this, but you can also do them across. So that's up to you. And now I'm gonna fill them with different lines and shapes. So maybe in this one, I'm gonna draw a zigzag line. Up point, down point. You can even get fancy with your lines if you wanna add other shapes or patterns inside. Another one that I like to do for a zigzag is just drawing a smaller triangle inside of each one, and then it makes it slightly more detailed. Here, I like this curved line shape. So maybe I wanna paint that or color that in different color stripes that are going down following that curve. This one, I'm gonna make a circle pattern. And what I'm gonna do, actually, I start at the top one, but I think what I wanna do is draw a big circle in the middle and then as my circles go out to the sides from this big circle, they're gonna get slightly smaller. There, that's a fun one. Okay, next, maybe I wanna do a wiggly line. So kind of in the same direction as our zigzag, but more bendy and I'm gonna double that one up as well on both sides. And then the last one, maybe I wanna think of a different shape. I'm gonna make a little heart pattern in this one. So I'm just gonna add some medium sized ones, some smaller ones. Now, if you are using paint, remember not to draw any shapes that are too small because they're hard to get into with a paintbrush sometimes. Okay, so now my picture is ready to be colored in. If you have crayons, colored pencils, or markers, that will be great. I'm just going to show you really quickly this technique for how to do this sunset colored sky because a lot of students ask about that. And I'm also going to give some helpful tips for filling in the different patterns on your actual balloon with different colors so that your colors don't get mixed up in places you don't want them to do that. So first, to do that sky technique, what I wanna do is wet my watercolors, the colors that I'm gonna use. And I just add to start because this is a brand new palette, I haven't used it yet, and it's totally dry. So I just wanna add since I'm gonna use a few colors today, I'm just gonna add a drop of water to each color that I plan to use. I don't want big puddles in these. 
So just one drop is enough to start. And the three colors we're going to use for the sky are yellow, orange, and red, those warm colors, because they kind of make a peachy sunset sky. Next, what I want to do is I'm going to start to paint with just plain water, actually, in the sky. And I'm going to do about a quarter of the sky at, the t at a time, or one fourth of the sky at a time. That means I'm gonna do this top right corner together. Then I would do the bottom right corner and maybe towards the middle of the bottom of the basket. Then this area, the top left three, and then bottom left four. Okay, so just make sure that's all wet, the area that you're doing. And then, because the paper is wet now, that's gonna get those colors to blend and spread together. And I wanna start with the lightest one first, which is yellow. So I'm gonna dip my brush in the yellow. I gently twirl it. I never wanna smash it straight down. And I'm gonna add little blotches of the yellow. So I kinda just rub my brush back and forth with the yellow in a big sort of spot or puddle shape. Then I'm gonna clean my brush by gently swirling it in the cup and sliding it along the rim of the cup to drip off the extra water. And I'm gonna move on to the next color that's slightly darker, which will be orange. And it's easy to remember because they're in order from lightest to darkest. Okay, I need a little more. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. And just kind of fill up the spaces with some orange. It's okay if I go on top of the yellow paint a little. And if you want it to be more streaky, just bring your strokes more across. Clean my brush off and now I'm gonna add in the red. And you'll notice that the red, when you add it on top of the water, it makes it a little bit lighter sometimes. Once you spread it, more of a pinkish shade. So I'm gonna use the red. First, I'm gonna fill up the white spaces that are still left over. Now what I'm gonna do is make some streaks like this going across. I don't wanna totally mix it all together because I wanna be able to see those different colors. That's what makes it really pretty. So if I mix it all together, it's just gonna be all one same color. And I like being able to see these three different colors, okay? So that's how you do the beautiful sky technique, okay? Now, um, one last piece of advice is for when you're doing the patterns, if you are painting, um, what I recommend is doing the same color at the same time. So say for example, I wanna make some details purple. Let's say I wanna make my hearts purple. And the good thing about watercolor paint is if you go outside of the line, you can always right after just smear it or wipe it with a napkin and it should come off and you'll be able to cover it with another color later. Let's say I wanna do my hearts purple. And maybe I also, even though I'm not done with these hearts, maybe I also wanna make these triangles, the inside ones purple on the other side. So I'm doing the same color at the same time. Now, let's say I wanted to move on and paint this color uh, next in the background of the hearts and then the other triangles. I would actually want to wait until my purple dries because what happens is let's say I want to put another wet color next to my first one. Sometimes when they touch the color uh, get, gets mixed up which you probably don't want. So what I recommend is letting that color dry instead. I'm just going to wipe that up and I can repaint the purple later and then moving on to a different part of your picture that is not near another wet color. So I could actually move on to my grassy hills. And again, if you're coloring with dry materials, crayons, colored pencil, marker, you don't need to worry about this, okay? All right, thank you so much for watching the demonstration. 
thank you so much for joining me today on Miss Merrill Makes. I can't wait to see your beautiful pictures and I will see you again next time. Bye!